Hi, I'm Graham Glenn, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching, Learning plus Technology at Stony Brook University, and this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches and best practices to teaching and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this show, I'm joined by Dr. Manny London, who's the Associate Dean in the College of Business at Stony Brook. We will be discussing developing students' presentation and active communication skills. Manny, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy Can to you be tell here. Me, tell me a little bit about the classes that you teach. Well, this semester I've taught three classes, uh, two freshman seminars in, uh, in the Undergraduate College of Leadership and Service that I direct, and uh, an MBA class. The freshman seminars were on two different topics. One was on leading virtual teams, and the other was on social entrepreneurship and developing a business plan for an idea uh, that um, is of uh, value to society in some way or other. And the MBA classes are a course on leadership, teamwork, and communications. And we try to fit all those three topics, combine them together in one class. So the title of the first one was intriguing when you say leading virtual teams. Can you tell me a little bit about what you mean by the virtual team? Yes, yeah, sure. Well, a virtual team would be a team that would be uh, a group of people, students, uh, who would be working together, communicating, interacting, um, in part or totally online through electronic means of communication. Okay. And that imposes a number of potential issues that are different than face-to-face -face teams or add challenges, let's say. Uh, for example, uh, maintaining contact, being clear, uh, overcoming a variety of barriers that uh, could be imposed on the team as a result of interacting in that way. So what lead special leadership skills would students need to do that? Well, generally, uh, this is a freshman class, and so I'm trying to work with freshmen in the Undergraduate College of Leadership and Service to be thinking about how to be effective student leaders um, and also how to work together to get something done. And students often start clubs themselves. They are members of clubs and organizations. They do a lot of learning outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. And much of this takes place within a team context. In addition to that, um, we are preparing students for the future. And we know that's how work gets done in today's work world. Mm -hmm. And so this gets them off to the right start. In this particular class, I've tried to encourage the students to think about how they um, can work together well, how they can uh, be effective leaders in forming a team, composing a team, and then managing that team to be productive. And so one of the things they have to think about is ensuring they have the right talent, uh, the right task structure, uh, the right uh, timeline in order to make a, a group effective. They think about what they need to do to facilitate a group process over time, uh, motivating people, uh, getting them to understand the nature of their responsibilities and what they're trying to accomplish together, and then reflecting on how well they've done. Sounds like a class I should sign up for. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so in these classes, I, I believe you also really emphasize student presentations, but you are yes. pretty much against PowerPoint, that you, you don't like that as a presentation tool. Is that well, uh, yes, that's correct. What, uh, as I've taught the MBA class in particular in the past, where the students have to work in teams to give presentations throughout mm -hmm. the course. So they're, wor they're, they're learning teamwork by being on a team, right. for one thing. Uh, they are learning communication by organizing presentations around different subject matter and the subject matter focuses on leadership and leadership development and team development mm -hmm. and so it combines everything together but in the past when I've taught this going back a few years students would typically put together a PowerPoint that has bullet points you know the standard PowerPoint and they would basically read it uh, and many of them would feel uncomfortable giving a presentation and so they would they uh, really gave very dull presentations for one thing and I think we really didn't think deeply about the subject matter and um, uh, analyzing it and understanding its application. 
And so we looked for different means of presentations. And working with Nancy Wozniak in your department, who was very helpful coming into my classes, both the freshman classes and the MBA class, uh, we learned about different types of presentation uh, modes, uh, different types of media. So we looked at uh, Pachakacha, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, don't ask me. <laughs> don't, well, uh, it's pronounced different ways. Um, it's, uh, there are, you can easily find out about this, uh, P-E-C-H-A-K-U-C-H-A. -H -H okay, uh, it's, <laughs> it's the Japanese term for chatter. Okay. And uh, if you Google that, you will find many, uh, uh, quite a bit of information on it, as well as videos about it. Uh, and basically, it's images. Okay. It's, it's essentially saying you can narrate the images, and uh, you could combine images with a few words. Uh, but it's focusing on those images and putting it together in a, an engaging way. So you're not uh, just reading a bunch of slides, or you're tempted to just read those slides, but you really understand the material behind it. Another, um, another form that we've been using is Prezi. And Prezi is a new type of PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Prezi.com, P-R-E-Z-I. Um, and you can get this for free or sign up for various uh, uh, higher levels of it that cost a bit of money, but basically we don't we don't do that. We use the the what's available for free, and essentially this uh, is it's similar to PowerPoint, or uh, you can you can put together images and words in a um, in a flow essentially, and it moves from one thing to another in a very dynamic way that's quite different than PowerPoint. My, I've seen that. In my sense is it's sort of hierarchically organized. Yes, you focus in on an area. It brings up information. You focus on part of that, yes. it brings up more. Exactly so you're right. Drilling down through the structure. Precisely. Of your One student told me it was like putting together a movie right. where he had to write it, produce it, direct it, uh, and narrate it. And you really had to think about the flow of the information, uh, the logical thought process that goes behind it. And uh, so we found that very valuable. Students combine uh, those two modes of communication along with putting together other kinds of activities in their, in their presentations. Uh, whether it's case material, uh, whether it's games, um, so you encourage business them to games, bring props, simulations, props, uh, that kind of thing. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So they do some very creative uh, presentations at this point, really trying to understand how to convey their thoughts much more clearly than they were doing in the past. And this has worked quite well for our domestic students as well as our international students, for whom I English is a second language. Because visual learning is a lot easier for them than language-based Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, the, the foreign students in particular uh, would write out what they were going to say and essentially read it if I would let them, mm -hmm. and or memorize it. And I've tried to get them away from that to feel comfortable over time with giving a more fluid presentation. And as soon as you start reading, your tone becomes monotone. Oh, absolutely. You bore your audience. Absolutely. Whereas if you're thinking and putting emotion in, it's a lot it's Yes, a lot more and amazing. I can certainly understand how difficult it is for them to do that. I would have trouble doing that in another language for sure. And it's hard enough for many, uh, many students and uh, older people as well to speak in front of others, to give a cogent presentation. It takes practice, basically, and that's what we try to do, give them a chance to practice. In the social entrepreneurship class that I mentioned, one of the first things we do, uh, I do, is I ask them to write a, um, a one-minute elevator speech. Mm -hmm. If you watch MSNBC, business, the business program that they have on Sunday mornings, uh, it's on, I think, at 7.30. You may not get up that early on Sunday mornings, but one of the things they do is have an elevator speech where an entrepreneur presents to venture capitalists an idea, and it's as if they are walking into an elevator and the, mm -hmm. uh, the entrepreneur has to say this in, in a minute. Right. And um, so this is what they do. They write out their ideas, they think about it, and then they ultimately present it in class to the fellow students and to me. And it gives them a chance to really reflect on what they're trying to accomplish. What do they want to do with this plan? Is it, is it meaningful? Uh, is it something that, they, that will grab people's attentions, their emotions? Uh, do they, are they conveying enough information? And to be able to do that in a minute is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So do you have a sense the students are learning better because they're having to put more time into developing these presentations? Um, I think so. I organize the classes in a sequence of different activities over time. And so they're building uh, toward a much bigger presentation. In the undergraduate uh, in the freshman seminars, um, in particular, I do that. So they're working on, for example, in the virtual leading virtual teams, 
uh, they first focused on um, technology that's available, Web 2.0 technology, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, what media do they use now? Uh, typically they say Facebook and Twitter and they're not really aware of the range of Web 2.0 technology that's available. And what that technology does is promotes interaction among people. It's it's peer to peer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're learning that technology. Do you use that to actually help teach your class? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we use different forms of it. Uh, but uh, largely, they are interacting among themselves and with me in the class as they do their different assignments okay. over time. So they do another. Uh, they do a uh, a uh, presentation on um, virtual t virtual distance and the difficulties that can emerge in running a virtual team, as I was talking about earlier. Uh, so they have to think about that and what are those challenges and how do they overcome them. Uh, they have to think about and read some material on a high performing team. How do you construct a high performing team? Getting the right talent, uh, setting the right tasks, task structure and goals and so forth. So can you give me a little more detail on how you, you use the Web 2.0 to make your class more effective? Well, I don't actually give lectures. I try not to. Mm -hmm. I try to work through, I give demonstrations of this technology. Um, uh, we talk about how it might be used effectively in a team process. Uh, we talk about how it can be used uh, behind the scenes as the teams are preparing for their presentations and how, in particular in the freshman seminar, how groups uh, around campus can be using this technology to be more effective. Uh, so, we so essentially you're having them use the technology in their, d their virtual Right, it's an exploration so process, discussing with them, working through how okay. might this work, how might that work, as opposed to giving a formal presentation. Okay. Um, my understanding is they also do a lot of cross-disciplinary work within courses. Mm -hmm. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that and why that helps? Well, in generally in the College of Business, we try to focus on, on uh, crossing disciplines. Business is uh, a multidisciplinary um, uh, function, if you will. Uh, it combines marketing, accounting, finance. It draws on the social sciences. It draws on mathematics and applied math, um, economics, of course. So it is interdisciplinary. And we form learning communities. This is one of the... Um, means by which we've tried to make our business uh, curriculum more effective and a better learning experience by putting students together in classes where they're taking the same uh, set of classes together and as a result they can uh, the faculty can collaborate and the students can work in teams across those disciplines to problem solve and I think problem solving is really the key here that we give them real world problems whether they are projects for clients whether they are uh, cases that are made up, but still real world in nature, so that they are working on projects that they can say they are making a difference, that they are adding value. And we see time and again that our students tell us they've gone to an employer, uh, a prospective employer, and said, look, I, I know how to solve your problem. I can show you. Here's what I've done in class. And they'll, they'll, uh, they'll uh, show them a, a project that they completed that combined various technologies that dealt with a real problem that's very similar to what that employer actually needs them for. And that's gotten them excellent jobs. So if a new faculty member came to you and said, Manny, give me some tips on how to teach, well, what would that be? Well, I think the role of the faculty member is changing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the f and this is true in corporate training as well. Uh, there's a phrase that says, don't be the sage on the stage, be the guide on the side. And I think uh, you have to learn to be, at least I've tried to learn to be a facilitator to help students learn, to, to begin by structuring what are the learning outcomes from this course, what do we expect, uh, how am I going to assess that over time, and um, here's how we're going to work together to accomplish that. And I'm going to help you in the process by giving you guidance, providing resources, access to information, and so on, but focusing on real world problems so that they can show that they know how to apply their knowledge and search for the knowledge that they, they need in order to solve those problems. Okay. Getting back to our pre discussion on presentation, I have a question for our audience. Can you, do you know what presentation zen is? The answer when we return.
Joining us is Dr. Patricia Savas, the director of the TLT Faculty Center at Stony Brook University. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you, Graham. So tell us, what is Presentation Zen? Presentation Zen is actually refers to a specific book okay. by author Gar Reynolds. And that is a specific name of the type of presentation style that Dr. London was just describing, where we want to get away from using PowerPoint to describe everything that we're trying to say, and instead to use images and a few words to convey uh, the meaning behind our words. So we really want it to enhance what we're saying, not to say everything that we're saying. Okay. So it the, the images cue you about what you're supposed to be talking about, but then add a dimension of interest that reinforces what you're saying rather than repeating what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. So one of the challenges I've always had is, is finding appropriate images mm -hmm. for ideas. Do you have any recommendations on how people would do that? Absolutely. Within PowerPoint itself, and that is the tool that most of us are most familiar with, they do have an excellent gallery of images. Of course, we're used to the traditional clip art, but over the years they've added a large gallery of professional images, mm -hmm. photo stock images, and you can go online to their online gallery as well. So that's the first place that most people often look. The second place that I go to for, for images is Creative Commons. And Creative Commons is a, essentially a free distribution of images that have been given copyright approval to reproduce and distribute uh, with is attribution. Is there a specific website for that? It is creativecommons.org. Okay. And within that, you can search photos within Flickr, Yahoo, Google. And it's, what's important to do is to check the attribution to make sure that they've given attribution, the ability to use attribution for them and to give a photo credit on your photo or mm -hmm. at the end of your slide. Okay. So that's important. Mm -hmm. They're not hard to find. You just need to make sure you're, you're looking for images that have been given copyright clearance. Mm -hmm. And of course, mm -hmm. there's... I was going to add that students can take, uh, create their own images, of mm -hmm. course. They can take pictures. Um, mm -hmm. it, it depends upon what they're Everybody has a digital they, camera these th days. Th that's absolutely right, and they do. Uh, they also embed uh, films, uh, little videos that they may take themselves or that they can pull down from the web if it's available and insert that into the, um, into the presentation material. So that adds variety. Okay. What about Google? Is that a good place for images? Certainly there are a lot of images on Google. What we want to be careful of in, in education is of course copyright issues. And so I caution folks from relying on Google searches for images. If you're going to use a Google search, again, make sure that you're checking the copyright restrictions on each image. Okay. Yeah. And the references are usually available. The, the source is usually available and on each image, mm -hmm. so it's, they need to be careful about that, yeah. for sure. Okay. So Presentation Zen is not really a sort of a technology. It's more of a philosophy about how to present. So other than using images and a few words, are there mm -hmm. other aspects to this philosophy? Really, what Presentation Zen is encompassing is the idea that our, our slides, along with our presentations, should be simple, concise, and clear. And it should be used to enhance our presentation, not as a prop for our presentations. And that's particularly relevant in education and higher ed today because students are very accustomed to sitting down in a lecture hall and having a professor pull up a slide presentation that's full of all the words and we all read along together. Mm -hmm. And that's not an effective way to spend our time with our students, nor is it a good example for teaching them how to use presentation skills. Mm -hmm. My name is Patricia. Thank you for being on the show today. My Thank pleasure. you, Graham. If you have questions for either of our guests, you can post them on the blog on the TLT website at tlt.stonybrook.edu or on our Innovations in Education Facebook site. Just search for Innovations in Education. I'm Graham Glenn, and I look forward to seeing you on the next exciting episode of Innovations in Education.